Hi, welcome to Shrink Coach TV. I'm Anthony Rana. This is the show where we take you inside some of the country's best fitness facilities, give you a tour, and we sit down with the owner or director and we talk a little bit of shop. All right, today we're heading out to Wixom, Michigan, Metro Detroit. I continue my trip uh, from Detroit. Uh, you've already seen the youth uh, training roundtable. You've seen the USA Hockey Team Development Center. Now we're going to the Total Performance Training Center with uh, the director. We're going to hang out with the director, Jim Kilbasso. He's also the president of the IYCA. Hopefully you already watched that youth training roundtable. It was a good episode. Uh, Total Performance is inside the Total Sports Complex, which is 350,000 square feet. So uh, Jim's been there for, I think, 15 years, and uh, it's a really interesting situation. I think there's so many uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the place is like, it's, it's 350,000 square feet, but he said they could actually use more space, which is crazy. Um, I think they're about, the, the uh, performance training center is about 4,000 square feet. So, uh, but he has access sometimes to the soccer fields where they can do some warm ups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then they have another area, they kind of call it the cage, uh, that you'll see all about it, that they have another, it's almost like, uh, just like on, not a, I don't want to say functional training or a CrossFit type area, but there's you know, it's definitely a little bit more uh, um, uh, Spartan, let's say. Uh, very cool situation he's got going on. Jim knows his stuff. Let's head out to Wixom, Michigan, in Metro Detroit, and uh, visit with Jim Kilbasso. Hey guys, welcome to Strength Coach TV. Anthony Rana here in Detroit or Metro Detroit. Um, I don't have that same problem as we did in Boston, where I don't, I didn't know the little towns that I'm in all the time because I went to so many. But uh, we're in Metro D Detroit with uh, Jim Kilbasso. Jim, we're here at the Total Performance Training Center inside the Total Sports Complex. See, that's the one thing I forgot. Um, you could take this, put it on here. Um, amazing place here. Uh, this is this is pretty unique. This is the kind of first time we're doing a, a, a facility like this, where a training center inside a big, a huge complex, and we'll show you some of that in a little bit. But. Uh, crazy i mean it's interesting to kind of weave through in and out that we're going to show you in a minute but tell me a little bit about you know the the performance center and then inside the complex how long you guys been here okay so the complex was built in 98 i believe okay and it was originally built just for soccer it was it was called total soccer at the time and that was like what the owners really wanted yeah a place for soccer um, we put the training center in in 2002 Okay. So we've been here since 2002, which is pretty long time in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And things have changed since then. Uh, we're on a soccer field right now. It used to be a boarded soccer field, and then it was a roller hockey rink. And okay. um, but the whole complex. These are the small fields that you see right now. Yep. Um, the whole complex is 350,000 square feet. Wow. There's three full size, uh, regulation size outdoor soccer fields that are in here. There's two. Uh, they call them six or seven v seven fields. So for the little kids or for practice stuff. There's a nine v nine field which is for the intermediate age groups which is about two-thirds the size of a full yep. um, a full field uh, and then there's a baseball and softball training center and our shooting and stick handling area for hockey yeah. upstairs and this is just one of multiple complexes that we have but this is the big one and this is where total performance is yeah nice I mean with the training center let's focus on the training center now yeah um, how many square foot is the training center um, so there's three parts to the training yeah. center, as you kind of already saw. So our, the main part of the training center is like, uh, I think it's like three or 4,000 square okay. feet. Um, we, we added on when we got the hockey stuff and our office space, so I think it's three or 4,000 square feet. And then we've got about a, I'd say, I don't know, 1,500 or 2,000 square foot strip of turf um, for a warm up area. Yep. And then we've got another three or 4,000 square feet yeah. down there weight that room. is our team training area and another weight room that we can do like group stuff. Yep. So it's, and then, oh, and then we've probably got another 1,500 or so square feet for our shooting and stick handling yeah. area. And then look if no one's here you're allowed to use this which is such an amazing advantage yeah it's, it's it, it, this kind of is why this whole thing works yeah. is because we all work together so um here we've got a probably a twenty thousand square foot turf field and i can use it anytime 
you know, anytime yeah. I want because we're owned by the the overall complex. Yep. So we're all separate entities, but we're all owned by one um, umbrella company. And you know, when we when we do our NFL combine stuff, like I can literally have kickers go on our big fields. Yeah. And like Jason Hansen, who like is a legend, uh, legendary kicker for the Lions, like he'll come out and do kicking lessons, <laughs> like indoor kicking lessons, you know, yeah. for, for people like, it, and we don't have to pay extra for it because yeah. it's just kind of part of everything. Um, now this space, the space gets rented out all the time. Yeah. So all winter long between November and May, every square foot of this building, um, pretty much all evening in, you know, all afternoon, evening and all weekend from like before 6 a.m. and past wow. past midnight, every field is booked, you yeah. know, all the way through. Um, so there's certain times that we can't get on the fields, yep. um, and we just kind of, you know, we. I think you wanted to talk about that, you know, how, yeah, how we'll we have to coordinate. Yeah, yeah. Well, the logistics of that, yeah. because I mean, you don't want to have be like, okay, we're going to do a class at nine o'clock and rely on the field, and then all of a sudden, it's kind of pulled, the rugs pulled out from under you because somebody's renting it out and that's there because this is a different revenue stream. Although, and we'll see, we're actually right now, the, the training center is connected to where we're standing right now and there's a couple of those strips that Jim was talking about and we'll, we'll check those out in the tour in a couple minutes. So, uh, wh who's coming here for you though? Like who's coming to the training center? Who's your member? So for the first like 12 years that we were open, it was only athletes. We didn't do any personal oh, training. Wow, okay. um, we may have had, you know, an, a mom or dad here that said, "Hey, can I do personal training?" And somebody would say, "Sure." Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it was only athletes. Yeah. So as young as eight, all the way up to, you know, adults and pros. Um, I would say, just like other training centers, you know. The meat and potatoes of our business is middle school, high school kids, mm -hmm. and we go and we are strength coaches at multiple high schools. So oh, we do wow, a lot okay. of stuff offsite yeah, as yeah. well. Um, so that's a huge part of our our business or our yeah, membership, okay. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then about five years ago, we added an adult fitness component. Yep. And actually, uh, at one point, I asked Mike about that because he Mike Boyle because he had done it done a the little same bit idea. before. Yeah. yeah well, was against it and then started doing it. Yeah. And, yeah, and his comment to me was like after we did it, like I kind of kicked myself and realized, why didn't I do this before? Yeah, yeah. Um, but because of the space and the way we do things, I can't have like an adult fitness class going on in the evenings year round yep. because if I have a team of soccer players that wants to come in, like that's our, that's our meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes so, yeah. so then I, am I supposed to kick the group exercise class off, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and when they're there the other times of the year. So we have to juggle that yep. kind of stuff. I certainly, it looks like a lot of juggling going on. So we're going to get yeah. a tour of uh, this crazy, I mean, this is incredible. So we're going to run around with Jim a little bit and uh, get a little handle on what's going on. See here. the different areas. Yeah. Cool. All right. So the main entrance to the whole complex is down that way. They usually, people usually will walk down here to Total Performance and this is where they'll come in. There's a, like a snack and concession area and beyond that is like the full service restaurant and bar. But most people that are coming to train with us, they come right on in this way. And this is the access to the, the soccer fields, et cetera. Everyone's, everybody does walk through here? Pretty much everybody. There's a couple of, the, of other entrances, yeah. but like this is the main entrance. So this hallway is is where everything happens. Our front de uh, front office for like the whole complex is yeah. right across the hall yep. from us. Too. All right, yeah. cool. So, they're so coming in through we'll here. come on in. Nice. So when you come in, there's kind of two ways you can go. The main training center is over this way, um, and we'll walk over that way in a second. Um, several years ago, I guess it was like eight or nine years ago, we added a hockey treadmill and a hockey component to it. Uh, this used to be like the main office for the oh, complex, okay. so they had to switch it up because we, we got some extra space yeah. added. Yeah, we actually had it made, like oh, a, a, a welder had to make it, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the hockey treadmill. Yep, this is the hockey treadmill, and this is one component of our hockey training program. Um, we had to have this room built out with the, you know, the the support and everything up yeah. top. And you can see, like, I'm elevated because the hockey treadmill has to be elevated. Yep. Um, 
very cool concept for teaching skating mechanics and that's mainly what we use it for is teaching skating mechanics. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, we've got some video feedback, we've got the mirrors and everything. Oh, wow. cool. Yeah, nice. And uh, the guy that runs our hockey training program, he used to be a hockey strength coach and played college hockey, so he has both sides. He's got the strength yeah. and conditioning side as well as like the actual hockey. Yeah, we had that conversation well. last night about yeah. the, uh, you know, kind of the sport coach dipping into the strength and conditioning coach's area and the strength and conditioning area, uh, coach dipping into the skills coach's area. Yeah. So it's yeah. always a slippery slope. It is. All right, so we'll walk back down this way. So people check in or you're so you so when really people check in, yeah, sometimes we will, but they don't have to check in, check in yeah. because we kind of check them in when we start the training session. Yeah. Everybody that comes in, all the athletes, they know that the first thing that they do is get here a few minutes early and they go out into our warm-up area and they get our basic warm-up done before their appointment starts. Okay, yeah. So we don't. I don't want to say waste time, but we don't spend time um, having to worry about a basic warm up. Yeah. They can kind of get that done. Yep. We'll show you that here in a second. Um, the way the training center is laid out was somewhat exactly the way I wanted it back in 2002. And other ways, the complex said, well, this is your space. So, yeah. you know, would I like to have another three feet, you know, or four feet that way? And a a, a bigger strip down the middle or yeah you know do I want the ceiling to be blown out maybe yeah but that was gonna cost like thirty thousand dollars so yeah. we had to make decisions based on you know on a lot of different factors yeah so, it's different because this is not your little facility Jim Kill Muscles facility in the middle of somewhere you make all those specific yeah decisions. yeah we had to work with everything yeah. that was going on um, all the equipment um, it's, it was really kind of cool the way we got to buy the equipment initially and adding things on. So everything in here is, it's not like a college weight room where I'm gonna have you know, 30 or 40 guys all doing the same thing at yeah. once. We are typically small group uh, oriented. So instead of getting 10 racks, we have two racks and then we have one of everything. And we've got a little of everything as you can kind of see behind me. We've got free weights, We've got machines, we've got kettlebells, yeah. bands, tubes, lots of different bars, accessories. Like over the years, we've picked up kind of like everything, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like a little of everything. So we have everything that we possibly would need in yeah. here. And we, you know, some things we use more than others, but it's cool to have access to a little bit of everything. Yeah, I used to say my gym was like the Noah's Ark of gyms. I had like one or two of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how it's worked. And, you know, things have added on and we've gotten rid of things. We didn't have this Kaiser rack, you know, when we yeah. first opened because it wasn't even, it wasn't, it wasn't even invented. The neck machine, the Rogers neck machine wasn't invented at the time. Um, some of the stuff though has been here since the very beginning. Um, you know, this, this, this squat rack and several pieces of the hammer strength the equipment, they've been here since the beginning. Our rubber floor has lasted the entire, you know, right. the entire wow. 15 years that we've been here. <laughs> So down here is where we do more of like our speed agility and power stuff. This side is mainly like our power and plyo side yeah. where we've got uh, like vertimaxes and plyo kind of stuff. And then this side we've got the we've got the high speed treadmill, we've got a woodway force treadmill. Um, and you know some people poo poo treadmills because they think that that's all they're gonna do. But because we're able to do some treadmill stuff and then go right out on the ground and do a ton of ground based stuff, yeah. I feel like we kind of have the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, we're not stuck doing only one. You know, and like you said, if that's taken, at least you have an alternative. Here. Yeah, Let's so check out this high speed treadmill because this is something that I haven't really come across yet. So, um, so when we opened up, uh, there was a program called the Frapier Acceleration Sports Training Program, which was created by John Frapier back in like the late 80s, I believe, or early 90s. And we were part of that initially because I had been part of it back in the mid 90s. So, um, what I what I kind of realized was we needed some stuff to do if we didn't have the field space available. Like, yeah. how are we going to still run? Yeah. So we were part of that. We broke off from them uh, years ago. But uh, this is this is part of the part of it, and the treadmill goes it goes 28 miles an hour. Wow! Um, and then it, we don't ever really get it up that fast. 
you know, most of the time it's between eight and 15, but uh, it also goes up on quite an incline. Um, most treadmills only go about to 15% incline, so about there, and this one goes up to a 40% incline. And again, we don't need to go up that high that often, but we are typically at between 15 and 25. Um, which there's a bunch of research showing, you know, talking about force development on there. And yep. what we really do on here is a lot of mechanics work. So athletes can see themselves in the mirror. We can see them 360 degrees. Yeah, yeah. We can videotape them. We can make the corrections so they can see it. So it's a lot easier than teaching mechanics on the field where kids run down the field and by the time they get back and you give them the feedback, they don't even yeah. know what's going on anymore. <laughs> so we so we do use it quite a bit. Cool. Let's head out to yep. where. This, uh, the piece like we were talking about earlier where we actually have our first conversation. Um, this is connected. Yeah, so we just walk right out the door and then we've got this open space area. Yeah. So what's really cool is you can see like um, one of our trainers you know, wanted to bring a group outside yep. and he can do anything he wants out here now. You know, so awesome. sometimes we do events, like he'll, he'll, he'll have like whole events where lots of people are out here and uh, charity events, you know, where you can get a ton of people. Um, and then he's doing like farmer's carries and stuff, yeah, and, awesome. but he can do like a whole group. Um, so this is our warm up area down here. And it's basically just a little strip of turf that we have access to all the time. And you know, there's some equipment that we have down down at that end, locked but up yeah, that's there, locked yeah. up. Um, so everything has to be locked up. You asked earlier, like you guys don't sled. use sleds. Yeah. Well, our sleds are in there, yeah. and we bring them in and out yeah. because we found through the years that parents, like in a giant sports complex, if you leave stuff out, parents don't watch their kids, yeah. and kids will mess with everything. Yeah. You know, so like we've literally we've literally caught kids climbing up. Um, almost three stories up here, like, you know, shimmying up the walls and stuff. So everything has to be, you know, kind of like, you have to be careful. But this strip we get to use all the nice. time. And it's, yeah. it's mainly, always it's always ours. It's nice. mainly warm up area, but uh, we bring we bring kids out here yeah. during, during yeah. the busy nice. times too. You want to go down and see the, yeah, the, the other area? Yeah. All right, let's go down there. Okay, so we call this our cage area. Um, I don't know how much you want to get into it, but we needed space originally for team training because yep. everything gets booked up here in the evenings uh, during the busy months. So the idea was we were going to build up above and that got too expensive and eventually we knocked some stuff down and created this, this area down here where we've got a nice turf strip plus um, I don't know, kind of like a multi yeah, almost like a little mini gym. It's a mini gym. I mean, there's a lot of people that have come in and they're like, this is my whole gym, you yeah. know, like this is, this is perfect. So we've got a rig um, that is, uh, it's, for, it's a four station rig, plus we've got a couple sleds, trap bars, um, bag, you know, sandbags, ropes, uh, uh, yeah, tires. Um, even Dave, uh, one of our trainers, got a yoke. He does. He's a strongman competitor, so he's got you know some unique stuff in here. And uh, we're able to have kids lift weights, yeah. so we could have like half a team, like a soccer team, could half the team could be lifting, the other half could be you know doing plyos and sprints or turf work or sleds yeah, or whatever, so cool. and they can flip. It's so flop. Spartan over here, like this is like where I would think the guys would want to. Really it's so here, right? it's so funny because it's a because it's a cage. Yeah. Um, there are certain people like when we do combine stuff certain guys are like i want to be in the cage and yeah, they can yeah. crank up the music because they yeah. like you said it feels it, it, it feels really kind of tough right. and yeah kind of rugged cool and um, got upstairs too like there's a whole second floor here that stuff's going on here that's yeah. where we have the the treadmill to uh, the uh hockey the stuff, hockey right? stuff yeah do you want to head up there and yeah, check that go, out uh, before i do that though yeah any concerns with like kind of the logistics of kind of moving people back and forth or like soccer going on is it a pain in the butt that way or um kind of keeping control of so, these two areas or three areas so I, I would say that if if you're the kind of person who has to have absolute control and um, things must be your way yeah. and everybody needs to stay your way uh yeah. you wouldn't like this environment yeah, yeah. um but we all work together quite well. Everybody, everybody here, including the customers, like everybody just gets that there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if there's a game going on here, a lot of parents will be, you know, standing on the sidelines watching, but they understand that, 
hey, we've got a program that takes place down here. And so, yeah, there might be a bunch of kids that walk in front of them yep. uh, or, or whatever. Everybody just kind of, they, they get it, you know. It turns they, into almost like a, like a, this, if there's a lot of parents, like the gold, the gold gym at Venice Beach or something, right? Like the guys are in the cage working out. A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, We've had employees, you know, other uh, at certain times that like it bothers them that like, you know, this is you know this is supposed to be our area. Yeah. Um, and kids will go into our turf area if it's if we're not using it yeah. for an hour, you know, like yeah, we find kids in there kicking soccer balls around. If I was a kid and there was an open area with turf yeah. and I had a soccer ball, I'd go in there too. So you you know you just have to. You kind of have to understand that that there's just so much going on here that we all have to kind of work together. Yep, cool. So you want to head upstairs? Yeah, let's go. Head okay, upstairs. let's head on up. Okay, so this is one of the softball and baseball training areas, and you can see there are hitting and uh, pitching tunnels for lessons. Um, this isn't like automated batting cages yeah. we have those in a different place yeah. this is mainly where they do lessons yeah. um, teams will rent this out to do like their whole team and then sometimes they'll rent out a field to do their fielding and they'll rent this area out to do their skill stuff and we have a ton of instructors as well that are pretty awesome coaches that yeah. will do like hitting and pitching lessons like I'm sure they do you know in other areas and then we've got this area where a few years ago we were able to to get some synthetic ice so we've set this up for shooting and stick handling for our hockey kids yeah. and uh, it's not enormous but we don't really need it because like I said before we're, we're typically in small group kind of setting and yeah. even when we do teams only a third of the team comes up here at a time anyway yeah yeah nice and uh, you know it, it's kind of cool again I mean uh, we were talking last night about my place uh, you know, having a putting green. I feel like this is a similar thing. Like, yeah, it might not be doing instruction, but the guys can come up here, do their own thing, have some stuff, you know, something to do, another another added value. Absolutely, and hockey players uh, around here, like, they want to be able to shoot. You know, so they, if they're gonna be training for hockey, you know, they want a place where they can come up here and shoot. Yeah. And whether they're doing a lesson, like a shooting lesson, or they just wanna come up here and, and get their shots in, you know, they, they kinda need it. Yeah, man, we're in hockey town, so. Yeah, so kinda All have right. to have it. <laughs> well, let's go down and uh, get a little quick business talk. Let's go talk. All right, very cool, loving this place. Um, I'm a little intimidated, like, from the perspective of, if you said, Aunt, I need you to come here and run this place, I'd be a little scared because there's so many moving parts and there's so much going on, but I, I love it. But what's some of the big challenges that you've kind of faced here? Well, what's nice is like, I don't have to run this whole place. Yeah, yeah. So there's somebody else that runs the baseball. There's somebody separate that runs our lacrosse. There's somebody yeah. separate that rents out the fields. So like, you couldn't have one person do everything here. Yeah. So there's a whole team of people that do stuff here. Yeah. Which is really cool. And does that kind of like the philosophies get in the way ever because they're like you know we we talked about this with our uh, special uh Trinco tv episode of youth training is like sometimes with this idea and we just talked about it too the sport coaches and the strength coaches and there's certain strength certain sport coaches have ideas about training and they're like well you know like is there any of that that you have to kind of face um, yeah and it's not it's not so much philosophical as much as it, as it is financial. Okay. So, you know, we may say, hey, we've got a great idea for a kids program, um, but if our soccer guy already has the big field rented out at $700 an hour, and you know, he's got it rented out like every day for months, like how am I supposed to come in and say, well, you know, this might work. Yeah, you know, like so there is some of that, and uh, you you know, soccer pays the bills here because there are some major soccer clubs that pay everything, so um, that rent the the whole place up. So, yeah, we get we get that a little bit. Yeah, and, um, you know, I I guess a little bit with uh, you know with some of the training methodologies, um, you've always got coaches who are gonna you know think that they want to do things one way. Yeah. So we may not get that team, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, there are there are hockey people around here that are like, you know, tread, hockey treadmills suck. And then there are other hockey coaches that are like, oh my God, we're coming here specifically for the hockey yeah, treadmill. Yeah. And then other coaches, you know, think, you know, well, uh, they come in and say, well, I want my kid doing this, you know. So, yeah, we get a little bit yeah. of that. What about the logistics? We kind of touched on a little bit earlier of, of um, how hard has it been in terms of trying to, you know, establish a program with using some of the big, area you have so much area here and then saying 
well, we can't, like all of a sudden, like we said, maybe the, the rug gets pulled out from under you because you can't use that because you don't, you can use it, but you don't, you don't, you're not entitled to it. Yeah. It's not yours. So we have pretty much just, we just don't do that yeah. anymore. You know, we just make sure that if it's at a time that it's, that it's going to get rented, we don't use it. Yeah. We just know not to yeah. do certain things. Um, if we know we're going to have a program that's going to go though, and we're going to do something like we can, we can go rent the field so we can reserve it when, yeah. when we need it. Yeah. Um, so you know, give you a discount. <laughs> um, it's it's just all part of the yeah, complex, yeah. yeah. So you know when we're doing combine prep, I just I rent the fields out. Yeah, because you every morning sure for months. Work. Yep. Yeah, and it's just part of what we do. And the nice thing is though, there's uh, so many other fields here that there's always somewhere for somebody else to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, what what other challenges do you have? Like for example, we talked about. I mean, there's really almost no. As big as this place is, there's nowhere to go. There's, there's, there, you always find a problem wherever you are, however big you are. You always find a problem with storage, etc. But you don't really have a lot to expand with this, do you? Yeah, that that is tough. Um, you know, there's lots of ideas. Everybody's got ideas. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, we should uh, make. You know, we should build another field. Well, when you start looking at what that costs, yeah, and and, and just you know changing things, it's. Um, a lot of times uh, our decisions are made for financial reasons yeah. and and we're pretty frugal here you know this is not a um, this is not the kind of place where you know we've got an endowment that is just funding the whole place like we have to make this work mm -hmm. um, it's not uh, it's not like a tax exempt thing it's not like the yeah. YMCA or something like yeah. this is a business and we have to we have to make every single thing work um, so I guess that's you know that's kind of part of yeah part of the challenge of, of trying to do different things yeah. and, and work with people. Like you said, it was interesting. You know, it's funny with the idea perspective. It's like okay, why don't we build? We have so much height, we can build something pretty easy. This seems like a structure, and then you go to try to do it and tell us what happened with that. Yeah. So our team training area originally was going to be elevated, and we thought, oh, this is a perfect area. We'll just put some steel across yeah, and have on. a mezzanine. It'll overlook these fields. It'll be awesome. Yeah. They said it was going to be a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And we started looking at the numbers of like how long that was going to take to pay that back. And yeah. It's like, well, this doesn't like why are we doing this yeah you know now and uh, you know then it went through a couple different you know variations of how we we're gonna do it before the the least expensive is the one we took because yeah. it can make money the quickest yeah you know something else that's kind of a challenge for us and uh, people you know may may laugh is that because we have complexes in other cities um, they want us to put training centers there um, and we have the space and we could put them in we don't have the people yeah it's really hard to find great people that are willing to um that are willing to like be the guy somewhere or girl and like put their heart and soul into it and sure. really do it and that we can trust and that want to work within you know a bigger system um so many people seem to want to just do their own thing and that's probably a lot harder than doing something you know as part of us um so we've got places that we want to open up um, and we even have some equipment, you know, sitting kind of that we wow. that we've that we've purchased. Um, so if there's people watching, hey, you know, there's some job opportunities. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? cool. Yeah, that's cool because it, you know, it is. It, it can be you obviously open your, you know, I have my own facility as well, and and you know, there are so many advantages to that. But there's a lot of certain things. It's kind of nice sometimes when you're working for somebody and you don't have that responsibility or the risk the financial risk which is always nice oh yeah like so in 2002 when we opened up like i'm pretty sure all the money we spent on everything in here we would have gone bankrupt in the first yeah. few months because yeah. you know that's the hard time the other nice thing is we've got We've got a whole, you even met some of the guys, we have a whole maintenance staff. Yeah, the, we've the, got, the logistics here, it's crazy. We've got an accounting yeah. you know, office. Yeah. Um, we've got other things so that we don't have to do every single yeah. thing here. Yeah, you know? yeah, if something breaks, nice. it's not like we're trying to figure it out. Yep. We just yep. call yeah, somebody. That, cool. <laughs> yeah. What about, um, last question, just kind of like, almost like a wish list um, of something you, you kind of would like to see, like the direction of, you know, total performance training going, like in, not besides the, the expansion to the other, like here. I, I would really love for us, if we were able to do it at some point, to reconfigure things so we had all of our spaces in one space. Yeah. So yeah. that we could have 
um, the training center connected to the our turf strip yeah. so we could have our group exercise class going on right next to the equipment and right next to where the kids are so we could have everything in one spot yeah it, it is uh you know when we opened we were only one part of this yeah. place and you know now we've expanded in different directions and it would be it would be ideal to have it all. But having the cage down there is kind of cool. It's yeah. a little dark down there. You're walking down. You know, I, I do like it. Maybe we have to bring this area down. Yeah, down there you go. There. Exactly. Yeah. So very cool. Well, this is just a great place. And I uh, love what you guys are doing here. And uh, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Ant. All right.